Bruder drafts me in from his speech, two of the most powerful speeches in U.S. history. Abraham Lincoln and Franklin Delano Roosevelt, two of the most influential pres American presidents of walk the earth. One speech proving strength, providing means to end a long and bloody war. The other, admitting weakness, yet promising vengeance to those slain in cold blood. The infamy address by Abraham Lincoln and FDR, arranged by myself. Four score and seven years ago, a date which will live in infamy, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, which was suddenly and deliberately attacked by the empire of Japan. Now we are caught up in a great civil war, testing whether that nation, nor any nation so conceived and so dedicated, can long endure. Indeed. One hour after Japanese air squadrons had commenced bombing on the American island of Oahu, Japanese ambassador to the United States and his colleague delivered to our Secretary of State a formal reply to a recent American message. Others' replies stated that it seemed useless to continue the diplomatic negotiations. It contained no hint of war nor threat of armed attack. Now we are met on a great battlefield of that war. It will be reported that the distance of Hawaii from Japan makes it obvious that the attack was deliberately planned many days or even weeks ago. The attack yesterday on the Hawaiian Islands has caused severe damage to American naval and military forces. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place to those who here gave their lives so that this nation may live another day. I regret to inform you that many American lives have been lost. In addition, American ships have been reported torpedoed on the high seas between San Francisco and Honolulu. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. Yesterday, the Japanese government also launched an attack against American forces stationed in Malaya. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled there have consecrated it far above our poor, poor power to add or detract. Last night, Japanese forces also attacked American forces stationed in Hong Kong. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it will always remember what they did here. Last night, Japanese forces attacked Midway Island. Japan has therefore undertaken a surprise offensive extending throughout the entire Pacific area. The people of the United States have already formed their opinions and well understand the implications to the very life and safety of our nation. It is rather for us to be here de dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave their last and full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. Therefore, as Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy of these United States, I have directed that all measures be taken for our defense, so that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom and that this government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from this earth. But always will our whole nation, nay, whole world, remember the character of this onslaught against us.